I'm highly skeptical, sure. But what is that skepticism based on? If you're skeptical as well, have you asked yourself, upon what do I base my skepticism? Are you just plain ornery? You just don't want to go along with the rest of the thing? Do you know some other people who believe in it that are really pretty dense and you don't want to join their group? <laughs> You've got to have a reason, I think, for yourself and for others as to why you are skeptical. These things are not likely to be true. Therefore, you need proof of them. Now, you're not required, or am I certainly required, to prove a negative. I can't do that. I can't prove telepathy doesn't exist. I remember getting a question years ago. A lady stood up in the eye and said, can you prove to me that ESP doesn't exist? And I said, no, I can't, ma'am. She sat down, ha-ha, <laughs> with her arms folded. That was a victory for her. And then I went on to explain, I can't prove a negative. My question is, do you believe in it? She says, absolutely. I said, can you prove that it is so? She said, well, I'm quite convinced of it. That's not my question. Can you prove that it ain't so or that it is so? Not that you can't prove that it ain't so. Can you prove that it is so? You're the one making the claim. And they are the folks making the claims. We're not. We skeptics, as Michael Shermer clearly pointed out, we're not in the business of debunking. If I were in the business of debunking, and I've often had that label pinned on me, and I've always resented it, and I've denied it, if I were in the business of debunking, it means I go into an investigation convinced that this ain't so, and I'm going to show you that it isn't. I'm not a lawyer. I don't have an advocacy position to take. I'm convinced this isn't so. I don't care what the evidence is. I'm somehow going to prove that it ain't so. No. I go into the thing investigating. Now, to be perfectly fair with you, let's be real for a minute. Well, all the way through this, I hope. I can't prove a negative. It's true. But I go into this thing, I say, prepared to be shown. Am I prejudiced against it? Oh, yes. I have to admit that. After all, if you've been sitting by a chimney for 63 years on the evening of December the 24th, and a fat man in a red suit has never bounced down the chimney, all you can say is 100% of my evidence shows me that this is not necessarily so. I don't have any proof that it is. And what's more important, folks, is this one fact. It's not very likely to be true based upon what you already know. Now, I often end my lectures with this little illustration. People will ask the question, and they'll say, can you show that it ain't so? No. Then I got you. No. You have to prove to me, since you say it is so, that it is so. Suppose I illustrate for you, I think rather well, but you'll be the judge of that in a moment, whether or not you can prove a negative. Let's take Santa Claus. That's a very good example. Well, around the end of December, I'm awfully popular, I must admit, in the street. <laughs> and I have kids almost worshipping me. I'm sorry if they're disillusioned later on, but who knows? It wasn't my fault. I didn't tell them the myth in the first place. You have to examine the Santa Claus thing by specific means. Now, there's one way you can go around and measure chimneys. But that's not much of a, you know, it, he does come in the back door, I'm told, occasionally, if the chimney's occupied, or it's too small. So that's not much of a way of investigating it. Let's, uh, flying reindeer, there's a good way. Hey, that we can test. Oh, please, don't tell the ASPCA about this. I, I don't really want to do the experiment. I must say that in advance. I really don't want to do the experiment. But let's just walk through it as if I were doing the thing. Okay, um, let's name some numbers now. Okay, select by some randomizing process, oh, a thousand reindeer. Okay? And you get them all together in a reindeer truck or something. I don't know what you put a reindeer in. And uh, a whole bunch of people with whips or, I don't know, what do you do with reindeer? But anyway, get some people who know how to handle reindeer and uh, stick them up on top of the World Trade Center in New York. <laughs> you're laughing and you're making assumptions now. I can't have that. <laughs> you're going to test whether or not reindeer can fly, okay? <laughs> so I'll, I'll sort of walk through it with you, if you'll bear with me. You have a guy there with a, that's a dirty laugh, lady. I want to tell you, but I like it. Keep it up. <laughs> you go on the top of the Empire, uh, pardon me, the World Trade Center, and uh, you have your thousand reindeer there. All I, I, I put numbers on the side. One, two, three, all the way up to a thousand. Big numbers so you can see them. And you have a guy with a videotape camera, lots of pads of paper and whatnot, and pens at work, and you say, okay, the time is uh, now ten past ten in the morning. Okay, first experiment, number one, please. And number one up to the edge, and uh, ready? Okay, video camera going, good. Push. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, write down, no. <laughs> really no. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> push. Well, now I don't know what the result of the experiment will be. I suspect strongly what it will be based upon my meager knowledge of the aerodynamics of the average reindeer. <laughs> Though I'm not an expert on it, and uh, based upon previous accounts of what reindeer can and cannot do, I think we are going to end up with a pile of very unhappy and broken reindeer <laughs> at the foot of the World Trade Center, and probably a couple of policemen standing outside a squad car saying, I don't know, but here comes another one. <laughs> Now, it gets better. I won't throw any more reindeer, I promise. Um, now, what have we proven with this experiment? Have we proven that reindeer cannot fly? No, of course not. Think about it now. We have only shown that on this occasion, under these conditions of atmospheric pressure, temperature, radiation, all this sort of thing, at this position geographically, on the season, etc., that these 1,000 reindeer either could not fly or chose not to. <laughs> now, if the second, then we know something certainly about the IQ of the average reindeer in this group. <laughs> However, we have not proven a negative, we cannot prove a negative technically and rationally and philosophically speaking. However, People will often look at this example and say, well, how many reindeer would you have to test? Now, I'm not going to get into the statistics of the thing. Art Benjamin can handle that for you. I'm not going to get into the arguments on the matter. I will only tell you that you cannot prove a negative, and I think that's a rather good example of it that you might wish to use in illustrating your point. The other folks who claim that it is so are required to prove it. And if it's so, it's very easy. Just show me one flying reindeer. Of course, then they come up with the rationalizations and they say, oh no, it's only the eight tiny reindeer that live at the North Pole who can and will, on the evening of December the 24th, fly to do that specific job. In that case, you have to throw up your hands and say, well, I don't think your hypothesis is very testable. For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.